Here we go. We're back. I hope you like the first video. Did you watch the first video? You may not have watched it, so that's pointless saying that, isn't it? Yeah. No, well, never mind. We're in now. Which one was the first video then? The first video with the new. The, the glory is. Yeah. The glory is. Yeah. <laughs> the glory is. Yeah. I'm, no, I am going to start off with the Stephen Bartlett thing. Do you know? Oh, go on then. He goes, I hope no one's watching. No, the other way around. Um, <laughs> there's probably nobody watching. Um, <laughs> So don't keep it to yourself. Tell everybody about <laughs> tell it. Tell everyone. Um, don't be don't be like Stephen Barley who say don't tell anybody about it. Oh yeah, so there will be a million views. No, yeah. tell everybody. We, um, <laughs> yeah, no, we need it. Share this with absolutely yeah, everyone. Anything. Um, so yeah, we are Dan and Mike from Biceps and Banter. I'm Dan. That's Mike. Um, yeah. Go follow us on Instagram. Dan Biceps Banter. Mike Biceps Banter. Simple. Because we always leave that to the end usually, and we need to get that in right oh, now. Nobody's watching at the end. Um, probably should have told you why you should do that first. I've just gone in straight in with the followers without telling you why you should or not. But. Um, anyway, we're back today to talk about why we've never focused on 10k months as online fitness coaches, never. believe it or not. Fuck me. Like, that seems to be the gold standard, doesn't it, these days? Not how many results you've got with people. No, have you got a 10k month to your name? That's yeah. the most important bit. Well, we're here to tell you why that's not always the case and why it's not always necessary uh, and why actually by focusing on other things, you can probably get there. And why it might not even be a good thing, da as daft as that sounds. It there might not even don't be talk the about best that, they? they don't talk they don't about talk that, about that, that VAT. No, cause, yeah, because it looks good for the business, the, the business mentor. But remember that you can still have a 10K month without putting it on Instagram. Remember that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And again, I just want to back up the fact that it's like, you will get, it's easier to believe the flashier people because they talk about it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I mean, let's take Suck, a good, like, you know, friend Suck. Probably the least flashiest person going, but he's got a hell of a business. Yeah. Hell of a business. Um, he was our first business mentor, in fact. Hell of a business, but the least flashy person going, because he doesn't need to be. Um, so remember that you can have a 10K month without going and telling everybody that you've had a 10K month. And to you know what I find a little bit annoying is that the part of the reason why we don't talk about money is A, it's not in our nature, but B, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable like with my clients, like no. seeing it. Whereas it's, it's not even that for me. It's more a case of like it's not a metric of success. Yeah. Like you know, people talk about money again. If you follow some some decent people in in the business world and that sort of stuff, money that, don't make a man way go around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's one of those things where I know it's, it's the cringiest fuck right but it's like people think that by being rich they're going to be happy and all that sort of shit right and there's enough people out there telling you otherwise right so go listen to them but it's this whole thing about yes it, it, it creates more freedom it creates your ability to do more things but I just think that too many people focus on that and actually it's that Stephen Barlett said it actually on one of his podcasts he said when he sold his company and he got like ridiculous 100 million pounds whatever it was the number he said he thought it was going to be the happiest day of his life and he said it was the biggest anti-climax he'd ever had mm. um, um, yeah. he said it was the biggest one he'd ever had um, because he sat there and it was just like nothing really changed it, nothing you know didn't impact his life that in that moment in any way shape or form and I believe it's the same with 10k months yeah. with online coaches is that you have one 10k month your life doesn't change no. your imposter syndrome doesn't go your ability to coach your clients doesn't change you don't automatically become a guru you don't automatically become someone who is automatically successful you've just had one month where you made a little bit more money than one before mm -hmm. and and that's the reality of the situation and I think the way that you need to focus on it is by looking at your current clients number one and making sure they're getting the service they need but by getting amazing results, you will reach that goal eventually, if that's a goal of yours. But I would argue, don't make it your goal. Yeah. And you'll probably get there quicker than if you directly make it your goal to, to reach it because- You'll get there recurring quicker. Oh, recurring? Grandad. Grandad, yeah. Grandad, are you still oh, doing recurring revenue? Yeah. Don't be stupid. You should, quote, you should not be doing recurring monthly as an online coach. End quote. Yeah, wow. But yeah. yeah like, we'll have a video on that one. Yeah. But when we started, it wasn't even a thing. When we started online coaching, it wasn't, 10K months weren't talked about. They weren't banded around willy nilly yeah. like there was some sort of like heroic measure of success. It just wasn't done. Yeah. Um, or we didn't see it. Maybe that's probably maybe more the thing. But I just don't think it was done. We followed the same people we follow now. They weren't talking about it then. Uh, but funnily enough, they were doing monthly recurring revenue at the time. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's talked about too much. Um, and we're adding to the to the to the to the videos of that, I suppose, but from a different angle. Um, it's just not important. It's really not important. Trust me. Like Dan said, it doesn't it doesn't change your life. If you if you were nine or ten, it doesn't change your life, like at all. You might think it's going to, but it doesn't. And Dan's correct in, in what you're saying. With you, For if once. you yeah, if you focus on if you focus on your current clients. People do it the wrong way around. People focus on new clients, new clients, new clients. 
there's nothing easier than a current client. It's it's retention. You're not having to go and f- source it. You're not having to go and fucking send your cold DMs. It's so mental that people are focusing on the, the things the opposite way around. It's like the clients that you do have, get them incredible results. Get them, get them retained. Get them to stay with you a long period of time because they want to, because they enjoy the coaching, because they're on a journey and you're given a good service. They may get you a referral, but they'll definitely get you um, a transformation if you were returning, if you're, if you're yeah. retaining them. And then by doing that, you're increasing the lifetime value of your client because they're going to stay with you for a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. You then don't have so much churn because at the month three, month four, when their package has ended, they're just fucking off like the other people because they've been severely underwhelmed. They're staying for a long period of time. And then, so you never then need to be looking for 10 clients, 15 clients, 20 clients just to make ends meet. It's like you'll get a natural churn of three, four a month or whatever it is because that's, you know, naturally that's going to happen. Um, and then you, you're only never needing to replace those. So focus on your current clients and it will send you in, like it will stand you in better stead for the long term because you're going to be sat there with a page full of results with a page full of happy customers with a page full of people that actually sing your praises that are not um, underwhelmed with your service but are um, absolutely thrilled dying to give you a testimonial like how how much better do you think that that will be for your business in the longer term rather than just thinking about next month and trying to sell up five two grand packages so you've hit 10 don't do that focus on your current clients so that you get 15 clients that you're coaching them great 20 clients coaching them great 25 clients coaching them great and you're learning how to do it you sat down you're structured you treat it like a job you're not doing it on the fly you're not fobbing them off with fucking wanky every every four week check-ins like you're doing it properly and when you do it like that every single month will be um will be a record month pretty much you, if you do it like that, nearly every every single month will be a record month. Whereas what we're seeing is I earned eight grand one month, no grand, no grand, eight grand, four grand, nothing. You can't predict what you're going to spend because you're in you're living in fear. And again, we'll get onto the upfront and stuff like that. But but with but when you, if you focus on your on your clients and you focus on their needs, the chances are is that you will be able to build month after month after month once you've got your first 10 15 clients and and you start to get some results through it should in theory build from that people don't talk about lifetime value like mike said of clients no one's talking about this everyone's talking about charge a grand up front for three months right that's what they're talking about and again we've got another video on that coming up but we worked out our customer lifetime value of a client and when they come into us and if you work out that number, and again, you need to work out in your own business, how long do clients stay with you for? Because that's the key metric, in my opinion, that you need to focus on. So forget the upfront, forget the how much money you're making. How, how long are clients staying for you for? Because if they're staying with you for between four to six months, you need to get better coaching. And again, assuming they haven't got a result in that time frame, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But our clients get results in that time frame, but they then enjoy the process so much that they then change their goal. So for example, someone may come in, do some fat loss. Then they go, oh my God, I want to do muscle gain now. I want to get bigger. Then they get bigger. Then they go, right, I want to do more fat loss and go for a photo shoot. Before you know it, the client's been with you 18 months. Like I, I worked out mine the other day in preparation for this. I think at the moment on my current client list, I think I've got about 60 clients or whatever. I think 15 of them have been with me longer than two years. Mm. And that's not because they're not getting results, by the way. That's not, but before you say all this stuff out, are they? Like, but it's because they enjoy the process, the accountability of stuff so much. And I guarantee you, I think half of them would have dropped off at some point if I had charged up front or I had charged them every three months for an amount up front because I know that things have happened in their lives where they maybe would have dropped off. They would have gone, oh, actually, next few months isn't really great for me, blah, blah, blah. They'd have found a reason to maybe get out of it and go, actually, I don't need coaching right now. Mm-hmm. But actually, by doing it that way and setting the goals ahead of time and setting them up for their next goal, for their next goal, for their next goal, and coaching them through everything properly, mm-hmm. they realize that actually you're coaching them through life. Mm-hmm. You're not coaching them for their fat loss. You're not coaching them for whether they should eat salad or pasta. You're coaching them through their life and all this stuff and how it interacts with with all the other stresses and strains they have going on and i think that not enough coaches are talking about this they're not talking about how long does a client stay with you for because that's more important so the average for us is about a year yeah um, imagine that so imagine when someone signs up and on average you've got them for a year so yeah so we're saying look on average you got them for a year right so let's say you charge 300 pound a month right Three thousand six hundred pound nice. right straight away okay up front you might charge them a grand up front for three months right great but how many of them would, after that three months, would have stopped? You don't know. We don't know the numbers. We'll never know, right? But all we, all I genuinely believe is that 
if you focused enough on everything that you should be doing in terms of your Instagram, your social media, your outreach, which we'll go to another video, um, and getting results for people, you will get more people net per month join your coaching than you will leave it, right? So net over those months, if you gain two clients a month for a year, 24 clients will come into your business. You do the maths on that and you have a lifetime value of, like I said, 12 months at 3,600, that's a pretty decent wage. But people aren't looking at it like that. They're looking at how much can I get in this one month? Yeah. Get 10K a month. What's the point of having a 10K a month if the months after that, you've had so much work on with those clients because you're not used to fucking coaching that many clients and you can't coach them and they're not getting results that you then don't do the stuff you're supposed to on social media for month two and three. Yeah. It's, it's, so it works out to 3,333 pounds a month then, doesn't it? Yeah. Really, that's what you're, that's what you're earning. Yeah. And that's the number you should focus on, not the big months. Don't focus on them. The, 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 the client retention is massive like massive like Dan says if your if your retention is under six months not always because sometimes you know you, you'll, you'll probably get people that are I guess targeting a quicker a quicker demographic to, to coach or whatever like it might be they're the, the focused a little bit more rapid but um, if your retention is a few months and you're wondering why you need to get better at coaching it's that simple you need to be a better coach because that's the number to focus on, like Dan says. Start to focus on how can I retain my clients. And that's by being a good coach. That's by future pacing their coaching. That's by building a relationship. That's by doing fucking video check-ins. That's by being available for a call if they need one. That's yes, about actually being, caring about them. Actually week. care. Being a human. Chatting to them. Texting them. Not fobbing them off and doing as little work as possible. Doing as much work for them as possible. They're hard-earned money. Do as much work for them as yeah. you possibly Why can. Why not try that? Why yeah, try try, try doing that first rather than doing a, doing as as little. Yeah. Try focus on doing as much, and then they might stay for longer. And that works in your favour because then it's a, a client, it's a space that you don't need to refill, and it's somebody who's got more chance of getting you a uh, transformation. Nobody's banging out transformations if a client's staying for two, three months. That's not happening because you're not seeing that big wow movement moment in two or three months unless you've got somebody who's really, really, <coughs> you know, genetically. The other thing with that as well is that if you do that and you have three months and you only you know you sign them up front for three months, you kind of have to get a result in those three months with them, right? So then you kind of have to go a bit more aggressive and you have to do things maybe that aren't in line with that person's schedule, their life and, and all that sort of stuff. They may, they, they may then have a negative view of coaching, like, oh, I just tried to grind me into the ground, I just tried to do too much too quick. You might have got the same result in six months, they'd have been happier, you'd have actually got the result with them and they'd have stayed longer. So this is the whole thing, I just don't understand that this, this 90 day thing has come from. And again, I, I get that it plays into the current narrative in the world, which is want results as quickly as possible, but then you're going to get clients then by that that nature who want a quick result who aren't ha prepared to sustain it and aren't going to stick around for longer so what do you think is going to happen to your business when you attract people that want a quick result what do you think is going to happen they're not going to a they're not going to get there because they have to do too much to try and get there it's going to be too difficult the two is that they're then going to leave after that time period because they only wanted it for a short period of time if you talk more on your social media about the longer game about the longer process of it you share transformation with people have been with you for a year what do you think is going to happen over time people are going to go oh so it's going to take me about a year okay cool i like this guy he's really good gets great results all the time when they sign up they're going to be right probably going to be here for a year not what can i do in eight weeks then mate mm -hmm. what, what i've got a beach, i've got a beach holiday in eight weeks oh you're fucked then yeah, you're fucked basically. But there's coaches out there charge them up front. And they don't get a result with them. They go online coach doesn't work. It's shit. Yeah. Well, that, who loses then? All other online coaches. That, right? That's a, that's the thing. We'll probably do a video. Um, bit of a topic that we've kind of been discussing is about how business mentors are, are ruining online coaching, um, and it's because the business mentors are getting people clients um, who not don't necessarily deserve them. Um, <laughs> can't coach because them. they can't, coach, can't them. coach them. So then you're leaving a sour taste in the mouth of somebody who would have paid a good coach to coach them, and they're, they're never going to have online coaching again because they're going to think that everybody's been yeah. tired with the same brush. I'm going to be fobbed off with they don't talk to me. They fucking fob me off with a you know I, I can't even get to speak to them. Whatever, like I got no results and I paid fucking multiple thousands of pounds to do it. You're leaving sour taste in people's mouths, whereas you need to 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 want them to, to talk about it. You, you need to want them to be buzzing about it. You need to want to go above and beyond. You need to want them. You need to want your client, like they say to us, is that I can't imagine a time where I don't have you. Mm. I've, I've had that multiple times. Can't, I can't really imagine a time, Mike, where I don't have you because I just see it like a utility bill now. You just look after me in terms of my nutrition, my training, and it helps me feel good. It makes me confident, and I, I can focus on other areas of my life. Yeah. How many mentors are talking about that? How no, many mentors? Are, you know, how, how many people are talking about putting yourself in a position where you are as vital to someone's life as a utility bill? Yeah. Like, 
That's what you should be aiming for here. Yeah. Not a 10K month. You no. should be aiming to be as important in someone's life as their gas and their electricity and their water. Yeah. Fuck me. Like, imagine if you're in that position. You're telling me as a coach, you wouldn't have a successful business if that was the way people viewed you. Believe me, if you focus on this stuff, you will have a successful business. Believe me. Like, we don't need to rant and rave and sign people up front and tell you, you know, all the, all the details of our bank accounts. Believe me, if you focus on the right things, you stick to your guns, like, you stop, you filter out these fucking morons who are telling you things that make them look better. Remember that. Remem remember what they're telling you is to make them look better. Because yeah. as soon as you do sign somebody up front, that screenshot's going straight onto Instagram, even though you might have not had a client in for God knows how long, and you might not get a client in again. But it's the highlights. Yeah. Remember, the what they're telling you to do is to make them look better. They're not remember. sharing your month, two, month, three screenshots where you get no clients in, are they? We, yeah, we are getting nothing from doing this. So we've got, we've got no agenda to do this. Like, we've got no hidden, we're, we're, this is for free. Right? You had someone message you the other day, didn't you? Saying that they, they someone, the, the mentor screenshotted their first month where they made the money. But then after that next two months, they didn't. Because they didn't make any money. So they didn't screenshot that. But, and that, but that's the reality. It's almost like that. It's almost like those memes you see where you see the horse and then like, yeah. you know, what you get, what you, uh, yeah. what you, you know, what you get and what you get what you get paid and what you get or something like that. It's the same thing. It's like you see the first month screenshot, but you don't see the five months after that because they don't want to show you that bit but because that's not important. He also them. said that there's just tons of other people in there that are exactly the same so. thinking, am I doing something wrong? And almost ignored on Zoom calls. Like you said, we're, you're almost ignored. Like your questions are just ignored so. because they focus on the 10 or 15 people that are smashing it, that are doing that. And th those are the poster boys. Like... It's, it's, so like with that as well with, with clients we've never had a month where we needed to sign up 20 one to one clients no. 10 we've never needed to we may have a month where we have done yeah. but I see a lot of people say oh, I need to get this amount of clients in this month I need to do this I need to do that and it's like that shouldn't be part of your agenda in terms of like I need to do this why because well I had a 10 month last month and I need to get another one well you don't need to at all it's one of those things where if you focus on the clients, you focus on your results, the rest of it will come in time. And you should be looking at a, a better rate of like, say if you get two to three a month consistently for the rest of your life, you're gonna be absolutely fine. There's a level of anxiety. This job is anxiety provoking enough being in charge of you know your bills, probably taking, taking care of people at home or whatever and being self-employed is tough. Imagine that level of anxiety where you're having to scramble around because you're having, you, you've got to get 10, 15, 20 new clients. Like that, that isn't a way to live. That's not a way to run a business. Like, a business, businesses don't do that. Businesses focus on their current customers. Like, and then if you focus enough on your custom, current customers, you can get down sales, up sales, cross sales. Like, businesses don't scramble around to get in the next person. They allow a budget for marketing, of course, and you should be using Instagram as your marketing. But it, they're never in a, like, ask yourself this in six months time do you want to be in the same position where you're wanting to find people to sell high ticket to and fail and fail doing it and be desperate and then you're getting on the call and I can only imagine the pressure you do all your sales spiel and you get into the end and you're just daunted and you're yeah. like fuck fuck I've got to tell them it's two grand I've got to tell them it's two grand it's two grand oh that's too much and then you're like, fucking hell, we needed that client. Can you imagine that? Imagine yeah. that pressure. And, and not only that, but like you could have had the best sales call, but that person could just not afford it. And again, we're going to get onto sales calls in another video because we've heard some more horror stories with that. But mm. again, talking about how that should go and what that should look like. But that's why, again, we've never focused on that. So we're just telling you what we've done here. We're not telling you, it's not advice. This is not telling us, telling you to do anything different than what you're doing. We're just telling you that we've never charged up front for our coaching. We do okay. And that monthly recurring revenue for us is something that we think is important as an online coach and something that you need to look at going forward. Um, and by focusing on your current clients, focusing on results, that stuff will come in time if you focus less on that and more on your clients. That's what we're trying to say. That's exactly what we're trying to say. So there we go. The next one we'll go into why we don't charge recurring. Again, you, uh, why we charge recurring, why we don't charge up front. Um, and you can make your own decision. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, anyway, that's that. Go follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Dan Bice is Subscribe Mike, to this Banner. channel. I think you've got to do it. They say punch, punch it below. Don't punch it. Punch uh, it. Don't punch it. Don't, not like just, that anyway. Just, just, just click just it with your it. finger or the, or the mouse if you're uh, there you go. on a Mac. Have a good one.